I think you guys have probably heard me say in your in interviews that, I mean, I announced this thing in August, uh, and I'm still here. So it's felt a little bit like, you know, an interminable uh, Rolling Stones farewell tour. And I guess, you know, like Keith Richards, I may look a little rough, but I'm feeling pretty good. Have you emptied out your office? Or oh, yeah. No, you should, you should go in and have a look at it. It's... Um, like you never it's, existed. It's correct. It's like I never existed, which is a great way to put it. You know, some of you know that if I had a moment in the day and I saw a school group or a tour going around, I would uh, sometimes bring them into these rooms, which aren't obviously on the tour, to come and see the cabinet. It's their cabinet room and come and see the premier's office. And I made a few mistakes over 10 years, but I rarely called it my office, and that was intentional. It's the premier's office. Uh, and. Um, uh, the landlords are the people of the province, and I was just the tenant for 10 years. Happy to be the tenant. It's a pretty special room, but just the tenant. And now there'll be, uh, you know, next week there'll be a, a new tenant that's, uh, that's renting out that space for a little bit. Um, but it's, uh, it's been a great place to work. I've said many also on the tour when, when people have a look at the cabinet room that, you know, if you can't feel the honor of the, of the job that we have just sitting in that room, which really is untouched by any renovation for, since the building opened. It's the original, almost everything except the carpet. If you can't feel the honor of the job while you're sitting in that room every Wednesday, then man, check your pulse, or, you know, because it's, uh, you should. It's a special place. You folks get to work here too. And some of you have offices here and some are, you're, so the others are here regularly, but it's a pretty special place to be able to come to work every day. So. Mr. Premier, are you going to be able to tell Cabinet today what you really think? <laughs> <laughs> I hope I've been doing that for 10 years. I think some of the Cabinet Ministers might say that I, pro I maybe have done that a little bit. But uh, um, no, it's going to be a good week. You know, we have some, uh, some important work to do today. We're going to be looking at the, on the issue of education funding, uh, which is top of mind right now in the province and should be. And, you know, through the year, we've... Uh, uh, we've made a few adjustments with respect to uh, budget. That's happened not just this year, but it's happened in almost every other budget year. And there are pressures. And school boards are saying, look, we have, we've, we've reduced, we've cut. Uh, and I think a lot of them have worked hard to do just that. So we can look at a couple of options for some interim help perhaps today. And then, and then in the long term, I think I've heard every single leadership candidate say this is going to be a priority. So, uh, you know, I, I also know that the finances for the province are on track, um, uh, that we're, uh, we're in a reasonably good spot for hitting our goal, and so that speaks well to getting back to balance. <clears throat> and, uh, and so perhaps uh, now is the time for some interim support in the education sector. Just regarding education, looking at the release. I already, I just there. commented on it. I know, but <laughs> just given the fact that they're, they're basically yeah, saying the yeah. province hasn't moved from their opening position, and yeah. Pat May has told me this morning that the province isn't willing to even talk about some non-monetary matters, things like duties of a teacher, uh, mm -hmm. workable hours, things like that. Wait, what's the province's response to those concerns? Well, you know, we value and respect the collective bargaining process. Uh, we know there's, uh, uh, you know, we know there's concerns there. I would also note, I think, at the end of the release that uh, that Mr. May said, "Look, we prefer collective bargaining, uh, and that's what the government prefers." So, um, I'm hopeful that. At, you know, next week when there's a new leader in place and maybe maybe assisted perhaps somewhat by decisions that are even made today for the next leader to consider early next week, uh, that um, uh, that there'll be progress and, and everybody can get back to what the table. the timing of the release just given, you know, Saturday? Come well, up sure. I mean, I guess uh, you'd have to ask them about the timing of the press release. And Ralph, one more, sorry, just on labor overall, what mm -hmm. do you make of the state of labor relations as you're leaving it now, just given, you know, the... The 3.5% and how that sort of seems un unattainable by, by right. your own admission and, and right. hard power's admission and SGEU doesn't seem to be too happy with the negotiations right. as of now and neither is the SDF. Well, I mean, uh, first of all, I, I would just say, as I've said in the past, that what we were asking from the public service we knew was tough. Uh, we t the MLAs took a pay cut and ministerial staff uh, in this building took a pay cut, deputy ministers took the pay cut. It's not an easy thing to ask anybody to do. I'd also would note for all of our, uh, for, for all of our friends in the public service that, I mean, it's getting a lot better now economically, but for a while we had thousands of people out of work in the sector that's important for my province, the energy, uh, for this province and, and really prevalent in my home area. A lot of people didn't just take a pay cut. Well, they did. They took a hundred percent pay cut. And so the challenges of this last, of, of, of what have been commodity prices at stubbornly low prices for longer than anybody forecast, well, they're real. Now, um, 
that's, as I've said in the past, and you've, you've highlighted what the Minister of Finance has said, uh, look, if we, are, if we can't get the overall 3.5, uh, it's important to uh, to get something sustainable in the long term, and we value the public service. We do, we want their morale to be as you know as high as po we want them to be happy in the in the workplace, and uh, and they deliver important public service. And I know that'll be a priority for the premier going forward. I would just say that we are on track with the balanced budget plan. The budget's on track this year, notwithstanding the tough decisions. And I would note a couple of other make another quick quick observations if I can, David. One. That we're one of the only provinces that actually is talking about a balanced budget. I was doing a national uh, wrap-up interview yesterday, and I sort of made that point that it's like we've all had collective amnesia about the 90s, where, where parties of every stripe engaged in uh, unsustainable budgeting, including in our province. It's like we've all forgotten what happened after that, when years later the, the, the impact was great on public services. Uh, and it seems like the country's doing it again. Nationally, the federal government's talking about billions of dollars of deficit with no plan to get to balance. They're doing that next door. Even Manitoba's talking about no balance till after the next election. I, you know, and I just think it's, uh, I'm happy that Saskatchewan's saying, no, we're going to deal with this now. It might be a three-year plan. Some leadership candidates are talking about a four-year plan. But we're going to deal with it uh, because we're going to avoid the uh, the implications of not dealing with it, which were visited on this province, and so I, I'm I'm happy about that. Uh, and uh, I would also, uh, uh, you know, I'd, I'd also note that in the long term, it's going to make our economy stronger if we deal with this. Now. Was the education. Uh, no, I just one last thing on the education note. Just uh, you know, talking to the uh, Cypress School, sort of the uh, Cypress School, Chinook, Chinook, Chinook School. Sorry, yeah. You. In you know, your home riding, you're talking about teachers potentially being out of a job there. For yeah. this, uh, potential interim measures, that an extra cash injection to keep some of these classroom supports there, or are we still looking at the There's a number of options that are being discussed today, and I'm sure will be discussed in the future. There's a couple of boards that were hit uh, because of a new, the new formula that were hit, uh, not with intent, but inadvertently hit harder than others. That's one of them. Um, Ralph Goodale was at an event this morning, was asked about the Stanley trial and any preparations, he's, any instructions he's giving to the RCMP, any concerns he has over public safety. As you exit, do you have any similar concerns? Because he just put it all on the lap of the province, even though the RCMP are federal jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But uh, is there any instruction in Ministry of Justice, any concern you have if this is a not guilty verdict by the end of this? What yeah. scenes, what may happen, do you have concerns? Well, well, just generally, and you might remember, Sarah, I commented publicly on social media when we saw some of the commentary that was uh, not only not helpful but dangerous um, uh, immediately after the event. And so, I mean, leadership at the federal and provincial level can continue to and must continue to encourage people to avoid that sort of thing. This is going to be uh, a difficult time for the province, but I believe we're up to the test. Um, I believe we'll 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 meet the challenge together, and no, notwithstanding how difficult it is, um, I, people need to uh, to respond with with uh, with reason and with care. Uh, and as for preparations, and I'm, I won't get into details, but I know uh, uh, law enforcement, the RCMP in particular, uh, ministries and government are, are you know they're they're very mindful of what's going to be happening next week and in the weeks ahead, and, and are preparing for that. In Saskatchewan, Thanks, you think be shown in a good light when we have this national focus as I mean it's the first one I think real national trial since the Dagenet trial 10 years ago. Well I mean uh, this calls for speculation hard to answer that question. Hey, what do you make on the uh, commentary sir? We'll hear you. I'll go here one more next yeah. Hey, what do you make of the commentary surrounding uh, you know, this whole end of the license plate situation and uh, good friend Marie Mad you're saying you're kind of leaving office. Before. Who's good friend? <laughs> I know you know David will be playing the tape. Yes, my good friend. <laughs> As he said, uh, you know, your license plate dragging between your legs on this one. So what do you make of all the commentary coming out of this license plate situation? Uh, provincially and nationally, I would add just in there. It's remarkable to me that people were surprised with the license plate uh, decision that we made when we did make it. In the throne speech, we highlighted in the speech from the throne, a very public document, we highlighted, look, Alberta's ignoring trade rulings they've lost on beer. This can't continue. Uh, there's going to, well, let me, no, no, David, gosh, let me answer the question. <laughs> it's the last scrum. Um, we're going to uh, retaliate if they don't change. And we retaliated. Uh, we're going to be able to do uh, with, light, with PST enforcement what, what would have happened with the license plates anyway. But we wanted to get Alberta's attention. And for the first time since the beer 
since their unfair beer practices, which, by the way, put at risk hundreds of jobs in this province and a very significant business in Saskatoon. Um, for the first time since they began that beer pricing policy, their trade minister came out on the weekend or before the weekend and said, we will honour the, if we lose the appeal, they've already lost the first trade ruling on their policy, their beer policy. If we lose the appeal, we'll honour it. That's huge. That's huge. Oh, but, they, but <laughs> well, you, you know, you could prove a double negative. We were just never hearing anything from them other than they're going full bore ahead, notwithstanding trade rulings on, the beer, on their beer pricing. So we got their full attention. Um, we do have issues that contractors have pointed out to in terms of harmonized safety standards. I think we can work together with Alberta on that. But I think, and I think the other message to our friends in Alberta is that the next government's going to be, the next Premier, I'm sure, will be watching to make sure that the Trade Minister keeps their, uh, keeps their commitment. One so, last one. We've just got a few days left here, Premier. What's yeah. one of the memories you're going to take with you, aside from how much you love these scrums? <laughs> well, you know, yesterday, that same uh, year in an interview, they said, what are, you, what, uh, what's, what are you going to miss? And you can't say the people. Well, that's the an actually, that is the answer. It's the people. Uh, that I got to work with. I got to work with them. I enjoyed coming to work. People that I work with have a good sense of humor and we don't take ourselves too seriously, but we're here. They were, they were here for public service. That's a pretty great group to work with. And uh, most of them, if not, I think all of them are friends, some lifelong friends. And, and then, of course, the people of Saskatchewan. I got to meet people all over this province that otherwise won't be meeting, uh, you know, in the future. And so, uh, uh, and so I'm going to miss that. But you know, I'm, as I, leave, as I leave, and I, I, this will be the last scrum, I, I, I'm feeling, uh, you know, there's, there is that sign that we've put up in the cabinet that says, have you left things better than you found it? And, you know, you consider a number of things. There's 160,000 more people in the province today. There's 60,000 more jobs. Uh, we have a AAA credit rating, notwithstanding four years of stubbornly low commodity prices. We have a different attitude in this province. It's changed. I mean, even through difficult times, people are positive about Saskatchewan and its role in the country and the world, and, and there's been a number of other things, whether it's in healthcare or other parts of government uh, infrastructure investments we've made. So that we could always, you know, we can always look back and say, well, we could have done a little better. I wish we'd have done that differently. But uh, I, I think we've left. I've, I've been part of a group that's left things better than they found them, and I'm going to be wishing the next group uh, all the best as they build on on that and address other issues going forward. So, and I'll miss all of you. See you around. Thanks, guys.